Yes, they've been almost the best for last. So this is something that I think has been um, thought about by many, many, many people. And again, another modular attachment for his ESK. But this now plugs in more to the software side. So imagine if your machine knew what colors were on the machine in what positions those colors were. So that your design that was created in a format that supports color, which is kind of the other part of the equation, so once your design is digitized and we know that even if it's got 77 color changes, it's only five different colors, the positions of those colors are now known with this system on the ZSK control system. This will now communicate with your software so that when the design is automatically loaded through a barcode, um, the program colors are in place and literally just hit start. So. Uh, Simplistic. So, a much smarter machine than before. And you can see that uh, they have created these, these special codes on the thread that you just um, scan it. And, you know, needle one, scan, needle two, scan. And then once you have everything scanned, it will automatically match your design to, you can see on top, there's the design. Then what's on the machine, and it says, okay, color four is on one, color one is on 15, you know, so on and so forth. So it's doing all that loading for you and making things a lot more efficient, uh, a lot easier, a lot less mistakes. Uh, you know, it takes the, the human error equation a lot out of it. Absolutely, and if you don't have the right colors on the machine, it will match all the correct colors and then say, please change this one to this color. So again, well thought out um, and will be something that I think every single embroiderer could use. Martha already wants one. We do too, Martha. We can't wait to bring it. <laughs> So this is another one of my favorite um, uh, pieces of technology that was developed, particularly for our multi-head customers. So of course everybody always asks, like, okay, if I have a multi-head machine and I got to do names, it's just an absolute inefficient way to use my piece, my uh, my forehead or my six-head machine. Well, not anymore. What we can do now is using that head selection technology that where different heads can do different jobs at the same time. We've now adapted that to personalization. So if I have the same logo, as you can see in the way that they kind of laid them out on here, I, if I had all the same logo, all heads turn on and do the logo, right? And then when it's time to actually put in the personalization, different heads can turn it on and off. So if I have to do, you know, two shirts with one name and uh, one shirt with another name and then the next shirt with another name, the machine can just be left to kind of work on its own. And when you come back, you've got your multiple items that are done with the same logo but a different name. And it even goes so far as to let you uh, set different color changes for the logo. So if we had a red shirt, a black shirt, a white shirt, a blue shirt, and we needed to have a different colorway set up, without having to change the color positions of the thread on the needles, um, we can kind of organize which head needs to do which task um, with which color assortment of the same design. So again, very well thought out. Um, and now it's a way for those with multi-head machines to really capture a lot more usage um, in the personalization market, which, yeah. you know, of course... And this is going to make you way more efficient than before, because before, um, you would actually have to come in here and turn that switch on and off for a name. Uh, now you don't have to do that, and again, it's like that head selection, where the take-up levers do not go up and down while it is sewing. And uh, you're gonna push out that product a lot faster. So, you know, personalization was very uh, associated with only the single head market. We're changing that. DSK has changed that, you know, by by leaps and bounds. So this is really exciting. Yeah, the 
machine that can kind of play double duty. It can be your your high capacity production machine, and then can flip in an instant with using software and a few to now become a high production personalization machine. That um, you know, it arguably, you know, you can you can make the case for less labor, even if it's only working as a one head at a time. This machine can pretty much run by itself for multiple runs, right? It's going to do different names, but the operator's not standing here changing one shirt after the other. You know, the machine is actually doing it. So coming back that, you know, 30 minutes later and having your personalization finished, phenomenal. Yeah, really, we really. had a good question. Can this be used on a two-head? It can be used on any multi-head uh, racer series of machines. Actually, any machine, I think, with a T8. Oh, really? So if we go back to, um, you know, our models back as old as 1998 that you can put a T8 upgrade on. I need to double check that whether there is a, a, a version requirement because some of our older machines from the 90s um, use so a the, slightly different... Um, like the Jaffa? Jaffa machine, the Racer Racer machine series. Challenger? Um, J, J series, uh, early J series, like JAF models. But I'll have to check on the JO models. We'll have to see. But yes. that's really cool because, again, it allows you to grow uh, your business uh, without having to purchase a brand new machine. You can you can utilize these new developments on your current machines. So I think we're gonna are we gonna sign off right now? Well I wanna just show one last thing that I think is super interesting. And you know we looked at the camera system a minute ago, taking pictures of the uh, perforations and adjusting things kinda on the fly. Um, but this one over here is really cool, and, and actually by standing and, and walking over to it, you can you know capture a glimpse of the kind of uh, ceiling height that you would need for a system like this. But this is um, similar to the Beamer system on the Smeg uh, workflow. Uh, we'll have some other videos coming at a later time on that. Those are being um, produced. Uh, however, with this Beamer system, I've got registration for flat work, so a lot of people struggle with this, right? Is if you look down here on a patterned material, I can make sure that the registration marks are beamed down so that I'm perfectly in line. And when I'm laying this material out, that way if I need to run something in registration with an existing pattern, um, I've got a visual reference for that. And then of course, you know, that can change to lots of different registration. We could even beam down an image of an embroidery. We could uh, beam down a line, a crosshair, um, you know, whatever. So very, very cool. Um, and, you know, you can also see the use of something called um, the border frame with uh, an adjusting rail where, you know, on the back we can actually change the depth. So if I'm working with very expensive materials, uh, and I really have to be mindful of the waist. Um, I can actually adjust the border frame both left and right, front to back, um, so that I can get exactly the, the workspace that I need, even on such a large machine. I bet no one's really uh, experienced firsthand a single head of this size. This so you is... can see that you know the border frame itself is quite large. You know, it extends all the way to here, and then even further back. Uh, but you can see that it's utilizing just a portion of it because of maybe the limitation of the fabric or the textile. This is roughly a 55 inch sewing field, 1300 by 1400 millimeters. Absolutely massive embroidery size uh, that you can do on a, on a single head machine. Cool stuff. Do you want to, again while we're over here, you want to <laughs> tuck over to the uh, NNH? Here's the so it's more direct. And then we have, uh, we've got Michael, the helmet, and we have, from the n &H company, and we have a machine that's doing sequins, but a very special sequins. This type of sequins has a rhinestone uh, that's bound to it, and it actually can be stitched down. So you know, normally if you think of rhinestones, like how would you ever stitch down a rhinestone? But um, leave it to the Austrians, they figured it out. You can now stitch down the rhinestone using a carrier of a sequence. So 
using existing technology that's very reliable uh, and, and very mature. Uh, we've got an automatic sequence meter, but we'll feed pets so easily to sink it down one by one. And, you know, it has been modified to deal with the thicker, um, the thicker material uh, from the brain. So, you know, for those of you that don't want to invest into a you know, automatic Register your rhinestone transfer with your worry. Now we can place it down. And there's different styles. So there's a teardrop style that's hanging, and now this is a newer style one that, that is really more suitable for like lettering because it now stays very stationary. So I'm going to create a large initial if I wanted to create um, a piece of design that was, um, you know, perfectly registered and didn't have any movement to it. And it's, you know, it's hard to, to capture on camera the glitter and how they're also using specialty thread in some of the other areas uh, with the kind of the iridescent type of thread. Um, this is really cool too because you can use different colors of the sequin carrier, you can use different colors of the rhinestones, um, you know, so you can have a lot of different combinations uh, that are available. All with your embroidery machine. And then for um, those that really want to get into the the automatic pick and place rhinestone machines, of course, it's always been cost prohibitive to have a fully automatic machine until now. Um, N and H, and we're going to be doing a lot more work with uh, showcasing you exactly what's possible here. But is a very very affordable desktop unit that um, now can automatically pick and place rhinestones, not just your single color, which you would think is like more of an entry level model, but also multicolor. because once it's finished with the first color, I can literally just change out these hoppers from one to the next. And using uh, different stone sizes, uh, different stone types, different stone colors. Um, we can go from SS6 all the way up to SS34, and that's a huge range of stones. And for a machine this compact, and this, this size, it's really astounding. We can get a, a 12 by 12 workspace. <clears throat> and, and these are for, you know, for transfers. So you put your transfer paper down and these are patterns that you can, you know, uh, heat press or even use the, uh, the other system, the cold blue system, uh, and, and do other substrates. And extremely affordable. You know, the price of this machine has come in to be about roughly half of what you would find single hopper um, automatic pick and place rhinestone machines that had about this workspace. Um, it's just, it's, it's amazing that they were able to uh, figure out the manufacturing efficiencies to make something like that possible. So we're going to be working a lot more with that. Um, while we're on the subject of the rhinestones, of course these are, um, you know, freestyle machines that will allow you to place rhinestones down onto, um, you know, directly onto the textile. So it'll move, you can move it around manually and bond the rhinestone right to it, which is very cool. Again, working with all different types and sizes of stones. Just with um, a foot pedal? We've got the uh, La Perla machine, which it will fasten pearls directly to the material. Full pearl, so, you know, complete circle. It's not a half pearl. And with a... You can see it's, a, it's stapling with a very fine wire into the fabric. And very quick, very accurate. So again, another way to really kind of dress up um, with some of those highlight uh, pieces. And of course, this always blows me away, oh. is the rhinestones on um, the glue system. So the glue system working in conjunction with the pick and place rhinestone machines, the glue system will take those same files and apply small dabs of glue to the back of each individual rhinestone, if you can believe it. Um, but because the transfer is created on a registered sheet, so the plate that the transfer paper is sitting on has uh, got position holes so that it can be moved from one machine to the next, and then those uh, drops of glue can be dispensed exactly in the same position of each stone. So there's no film behind any of these stones. Uh, it's directly onto the glass or the substrate. So it sounds like 
They're celebrating at the, the end of the show. Oh, they're going to pick the... Uh... Monet, the limited edition Monet and Rory is going to be picked right now, and they're probably going to announce exactly how much money uh, ZSK has raised for the children's charity here in Greyfeld. So um, I'm going to go check that out. All right, guys, we'll let you know what it is, and uh, I hope you enjoyed our time, your time with us, our time with you. And uh, you know, if you have any questions, let us know. We appreciate it.